From the Journal of Avramos Long Journey, Pilgrim, with notes by Avos Tor, scholar of Reeve Library. Summer Solstice, seventh year, eighty-first turn. Second day in the trees. This is a very wet land, wherever I am. It rained at mid-morning, and again this afternoon. Is this usual for this land? Or am I merely in time for the rainy season? I suppose it has to be usual for the dense greenery. It is strange to think of so much water. I awoke covered in dew, which collected in my scales and ran to the corners of my mouth, affording me a drink. It was very refreshing. There was a little pond in the glade I had slept in. So I decided to take the opportunity to take a bath. We so rarely get a chance to immerse ourselves in water. It feels good to swim, to move through the water like I can fly. Even in such a small pond, it was very fun. There were small fish swimming in the pond, and I caught one. It was brightly colored red on top, with a pale belly. I let it go, as it was too small for cooking. Note, my colleagues in exoixiology were unable to make an identification based on such a short description. And as the day wore on, it became hot enough for me to appreciate my swim and the deep drinks I took. Not as hot as the desert must be, but still hot enough that I decided to rest at noon. While I sat by the trail, leaning against the trunk of a tree, I felt something land on my head. At first, I thought it was probably a large leaf or a small branch, but then I felt it move. I stood as still as possible, while I waited for it to show itself. Presently, a small creature climbed down from my head to my shoulder, and then down my arm. It took me a moment to recognize it as similar to the monkeys that they keep as pets in Nalifron. However, this one had a light brown fur, not dark red, and it was half their size. But the face, and the way it used its tail as an extra arm, was unmistakable. It used me as a perch for a while, and I moved very little while it did, only watching it. Then it jumped across the path, up into another tree, and disappeared among its branches. I don't think it ever realized I was alive. What a marvelous encounter. Note, a marvelous encounter with a Trelkison's surprised monkey. The species is quite shy, so it is unlikely it knew what Aphromas was. When I resumed my walk, I soon found the trees changing. I have not visited many forests, but this still strikes me as unusual. The broad-leafed trees I had been seeing were slowly being replaced. The new trees had rougher bark and smaller leaves, and the bushes were not quite as dense. Even the birds began to sound different. Still, what do I know of forests? Perhaps this is the usual way of it. Note, here Aphromos encounters his first shift. Always a disorienting experience for new travelers in the woods. This is a short entry, but it took me an hour to write. How typical of the summer solstice. <laughs>